Howdy all, and welcome back to Dad Tries to Learn Just Enough Resolve. Let's get going. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to create a subscribe button in Resolve that can be used in a scene in OBS. I'll create the scene in such a way that it's reusable. Finally, I'll use Advanced Scene Switcher to set the subscribe button scene to visible shortly after I start recording, and revert it to hidden when recording stops. Now, to make animate and export our sub button. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve, this is 17, and I followed a tutorial from Casey Farrow, so I'll link to it uh, in the description. So I've created uh, a new Fusion Comp right here. You can see we've got a called sub button, and over here on the Fusion page it looks like this. This whole thing We'll play it here real quick, right there. It's just built up out of rectangles and text. I'll go through the bits briefly, but if you want to build one on your own, I really encourage you to go in and watch that tutorial. Help me a bunch. Starting with the background, and it's alpha is zero, so it's transparent and media out. Right? All of this other stuff gets added. And we'll look at it right now. So let's go ahead and turn that guy off. Starting with a red background, we're going to mask it with a rectangle. I'll turn that back on. There you go. There's a red background. So the way I did this quickly was imported a sub button image, uh, merged that in, and worked over the top of it so I could get everything lined up right. There's nothing fancy about this rectangle. It has uh, width and height changed and a bit of a corner radius added. That's it. We're going to do the same thing to make this smaller rectangle and we're going to cut out this little triangle polygon. Oops, sorry. We'll change that just real quick. So here's our... There we go. So if you don't know, you can turn these things on and off with the one and two keys. I'm just tapping one. So again, this works exactly like this guy. There's a white background. It is masked by a rectangle. And that rectangle has width, height, and corner radius. That's the whole change. And then the rectangle is masked by a polygon. Polygon is uh, this guy right here. So they just drew three points. Closed them to make a triangle. The important bit for the polygon is that your paint mode has to be subtract. So you have to go set that. Set that to add, see it goes back. Subtract, we're gonna take it away. There we go. So we will merge those two groupings together. Put them over there, there should be two. So there's our red rectangle, there's our white rectangle with the triangle cut out. The next bit's even simpler, this is just text. So nothing fancy, picked a font that I liked, type subscribe, change the size a bit, and then moved it just by grabbing it here and dragging. That's where I want it to be, so all good. The fancy bit here, and we'll play it real quick. We're gonna turn everything gray. We're gonna do that with a color corrector. So we'll look at our color corrector here. And you can see we've got some keyframes. So let's jump forward to a keyframe. And the best way I've found to do things in, in Resolve is get it set like you want and then move it to where you want it to have a change occur and make your change. Set your keyframe, move it, make your change, and another keyframe will get set. So here we've got a keyframe. This is how we want it to start. We jump forward to our next keyframe. That's how we want it to end and we've turned blend all the way up. Uh, the other thing to note here is you need pre-divide post multiply checked. You're gonna have to ask somebody who's much more familiar with the color corrector than me. Uh, that makes it go. Then we merge all of this over our transparent background. And there we go. The animation is all done with keyframes. And you can open up keyframes. 
and you can see where we've got some animations. So right here, our center path, we're going to, that's what makes the slide in right there. You can see it going. And then we have blend and size, and this is what makes it look like a click. The blend makes it go gray. The size makes it a little bit smaller and then right back to where it was. And then we're going to take our center controls again and slide it on out. Again, I uh, suggest you watch the tutorial for that. It's really good. Now, I wanted to have a little bit of sound, so I found a sound in the YouTube sound library called Click Continuous. We can listen to it real, real quick. It's just got some clicks in it. So I dropped in an audio channel, just drag it in there, right? Trimmed it, and then uh, made some sound adjustments to make it a little louder. So you get this. If you play the right thing. That's it. I'm perfectly happy with that. It's nice and simple. So what do we do from here? We're going to deliver it. So you can't get a quick export out of this, and I will explain why in just a moment. So we come over here to deliver. We found our timeline. We're going to go to HOBS. It's untitled. We can call it whatever we want. Sub button. By default, probably you're going to have something like H264 for export to YouTube. Trouble is, if there is no alpha information, that's that uh, transparency, this won't work in OBS. So you're going to have to change a codec. So GoPro Cineform will work, and we're going to go to RGB 16 bit, and we are going to export our alpha. This will make our video background transparent, so we can overlay it on whatever we're looking at in OBS. That's it. Add it to the render queue. We'll get rid of the one that I just did a bit ago. And we'll render it. This will be very fast. Now, we're going to come down here to our folder. There's our other untitled. If we play this in VLC, you hear the click, but you don't see anything. VLC doesn't understand what to do with uh, this codec, I imagine. This works in OBS, though which we're going to switch right over to now. There's our OBS. We will get out of Resolve. And you can see I've created a scene. So nothing fancy. Add a scene. I called it Sub Button 1920. That Sub Button contains a media file. Media source right there. Whose properties are Dad tries to media sub button 1920 five seconds. So our export, I just renewed it, moved it. And it looks like this. There you go. It is hidden, and I will tell you why. So first thing we're going to do is move this a bit out of the way. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Uh, we've already seen it in action. It's sitting on top of... Uh, the mini motorways scene that I have. There's sub button 1920. If we launch many motorways, you see nothing will happen. See a little noise there. There we go. Many motorways. Nothing's going on. What I want to happen here is I want this to play, if you will. I want to hide and unhide this scene when I start recording. So if I do this, there we go. And then it's going to slide on out. And then I'm going to stop recording here. So what that's done is it has toggled the visibility of the media inside of this scene. So let's quit any motorways. It's a lovely game, by the way. And I've done this with the advanced scene switcher. There's a plugin you can grab off of uh, the OBS forums. That's a GitHub repo. I'll link that as well in the, in the description. Installs pretty trivial. 
the only thing I did to get this going was uh, started it, and then on startup of OBS, uh, start if it was running. Uh, you can change that to always or don't. I just left it as is, and I created two macros: sub button viz and sub button hide. So let's look at viz. What I've said is, if OBS is in a recording state where the recording is running, wait three seconds. Right? You can add all these by doing that. Remove them with a minus. Very, very OBS, right? And then I want to change the scene item visibility on sub button 1920. I want to show the source sub button 1925 seconds. That's the whole thing. And then for hide, if recording is stopped, set the same visibility to hide. So what it means is that in any one of these, let's become Mech Warrior, I can come over here and I can add my scene, sub button 1920, and when I start recording, two, three, there's our subscribe button, and then it will slide back on out. When I stop recording, it'll come over here and set the visibility of this guy to false. All right, there it goes. So on any one of these things where I want a subscribe button to pop up when I start recording, I can add the scene. And we're all set. I hope that was helpful for you. It was, a, it was a nice learning experience for me. If you've got any tips or tricks for me, I'd love to hear them. As always, thanks for watching.